Welcome to the Relate Church Podcast. And so we are, as you just heard, entering a new season as a church. We're going to begin a new series. And today is a little bit of a transition for all of us. And we love having the kids in the room with us. I'm not actually going to take too long for that reason. I don't think it is the children who have the shortest attention span, to be honest. And you all know that is true. But Rod just reminded me, or he just brought up, that he loves so much when we hear the kids kind of playing or just doing whatever they do in the room. And that when Jesus gathered people to him, if you imagine, and Rod said, remember like when he's feeding the 5,000, there's so many people gathered to hear Jesus preach. I don't think there was a separate room for all of the kids. They were there together. And so we value coming together. We also value having spaces for children to learn uh, about Jesus and meet friends in unique settings. But today I love that we are all together. I wanted to begin by reading some of Jesus' words, a couple of things that Jesus said to his followers. First of all, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, he said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. In John 6, 35, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I want to talk about hunger for just a few moments. Actually, I want to begin by talking about a phenomenon that I have experienced in my life, and you probably have as well. Something that often happens on Sundays. It might be happening for some of you at this very moment. And I'm not talking about when the Spirit of God descends or when you have an encounter with God, though that is beautiful and I hope that happens on Sundays. But when you have a long day, maybe when you're out and about or you're gathered in church or maybe at the end of a long school day for some of you kids, if you've gotten distracted or busy, you find yourself in a certain state. And when I find myself in this state, what I notice is that I can't really think clearly. I often make poor decisions. I am irritated and I am angry. And sometimes I have to slow down or somebody has to remind me of what is really going on and what is underneath or behind my irritation. And what I'm talking about is when you find yourself hangry. <laughs> is anybody experiencing that at this very moment? And you would admit it, oh yeah, we got a few in the room, my husband included. <laughs> hangry. An experience that I'm pretty sure is in the dictionary, I didn't even look it up because we, it is just widely recognized that when we haven't been properly nourished or we haven't eaten something, our brain does not work the way that it is intended to. We do make poor decisions. We find ourselves snapping at others. We're not really pleasant to be around and it's amazing how if you just eat something that changes how you're feeling. Have you guys ever gone grocery shopping when you were extremely hungry or maybe hangry? Have you? Anybody? How many of you know that it's a very different experience than going to the grocery store when you are fully satiated, when you've just had a good meal? In fact, I would hate to send my husband to the store when he's hungry. Sometimes he so kindly will say, let me just, let me know what you need. I'll stop by the store and I'll say, no, I got it. It's okay. Because he will come home with things that he would never normally pick up. It is true for me. I bet it is true for you as well. When I'm hungry and I go grocery shopping or I stop into a restaurant or whatever, I will choose things that I know are not best for me that are not going to provide the nourishment that I need, that will not take a long time to prepare. I'm not looking for a whole meal. I am looking for something to feed that gnawing ache on the inside of me, right? And so often I will just grab whatever is convenient, whatever is right there, whatever is uh, available to me. I buy too much, I buy junk, and it leads to regret. And I bring this up today because as I have been considering my own self 
and some of the interactions that I have had with others, I am wondering, church family, if maybe what we are experiencing today in our church maybe, but also just in the broad church, is a, a, an awareness of becoming or being spiritually hangry. Here's why I bring it up. Because we've wondered why we're so quick to fight about things that are not that big a deal. I have looked around and wondered why are we not experiencing the joy of God. Because it's promised for us, even through the trial, that joy and grief can coexist, that God makes that possible. I have wondered why we are so stressed out when we sing about the goodness of God and we preach about and we nod and say amen about how God is good and he is faithful and he's there in the, in the dark place and he sets a table before us in the presence of our enemy and yet we feel kind of irritated or angry and we find ourselves uh, grabbing for whatever will kind of meet that need. I'm just bringing it up because it's, it's a thing for, for me and for many of us. And it is appropriate and important to pay attention to our appetites and how we fill them. Our appetites are God-given. I just began this little talk with Jesus talking about the blessing on those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. He says, come to me. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? He invites us to come to him. The appetites are the longings, the cravings, the, the rumblings of your soul, if you will. God put them there because he made us to long for him, to long for heaven, to long for more. That is innate on the inside of us. And when we do not satisfy those longings with the life-giving nourishment that he provides for us, that he has given us that are designed to lead us toward him, lead us toward more. We so often settle for what is lesser, what is kind of filler, what will ease the ache but isn't his design for us. And the reality is this, that the greatest threat to our soul is not necessarily the deep, dark evil or the blatant sin that we get trapped in. That is wrong and awful, and the enemy will use it in your life. But for most of us, what keeps us from God is that, that is the greatest threat to us. The things that we will feed on, the, the ways that we will numb ourselves to what is painful, the, the joy we find in things that are good that God has given us to enjoy and to experience, but we make ultimate as we have talked about in recent weeks. It's not usually the blatant evil, but it is the good things that we make ultimate things that we look toward, that we, we, we use to meet our need, that keep us separate from God himself. He has made us to commune with him, to feast on him. The communion table is set today. He invites us to experience him, God himself. But we so often will meet that need with other lesser things. And these are good things. I'm not, I'm not moralizing what is good or wrong here. I am simply pointing out that maybe it's important for us to pay attention to what we're feeding on. Whether it be just easy entertainment, you know, binging a show on Netflix. I'm just going to mention things that I can put my hand up for, by the way. Um, whether it be scrolling on social media, uh, just entertainment in general. Uh, I put down here gaming, but I want to tell you that's not my thing, but it might be yours, and that's okay. Not a bad thing, a good thing. But sometimes we can find it sucking all of our energy and attention. Could be the pursuit of success, you know, the need to get ahead, the approval of others, or just busyness, keeping our calendar full because we don't know how to stop and rest and gaze at God. Productivity, all of these things are good things. Good things. But if your calendar is jammed full and your soul is empty today, or close to empty today, 
Maybe it's a good time for all of us to look at what is filling our full plate. What is it that we are dedicating ourselves to and making a priority in our lives? Jesus told the story about people who were invited to a big dinner banquet, about an invitation to come to a really amazing meal. He told the story about a man who sent out invitations for many to come and sit at his table and enjoy an incredible party and a meal. It's in Luke 14. And when the invitation went out, the reply started coming back. And it says that one man said, well, I've bought a field, so I have to go and see to that. Please excuse me. And then somebody else said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I have to go and examine them. Please excuse me. Somebody else had gotten married, and so that, that relationship was a priority. And so thank you for the invite. That was so kind of you, but I'm not going to be able to make it. And Jesus told this story and pointed out that there were good things that people were busy doing, and yet those good things, that the, the commitments that they had made kept them from responding to the invitation, to what is essentially Jesus' invitation, to come and sit with him and spend time with him at the table. The invitation that he's extending, and this is for all of us this morning, is to seek him first to seek him first. And this is what we want to kind of spread to you, church family, the invitation that we are extending. It is not an invitation to our table. We have a table. We're going to set some tables across this month. But it isn't our table that we're inviting you to so much as it is the table that God has set for us, that we feel so privileged to have a place at. And we want to invite you to come and sit with us. You can sit with us and seek him first. Let him be what satisfies you most. Enjoy his face and his presence and time with him before we go looking for pleasure or beauty or goodness in other places. Seeking God is a word that we, or a phrase that we use often. I think Lily said it earlier today. And it is a, a way of expressing that we are called to seek his presence or to seek his face. To seek God's face is a, is a Hebraic way of expressing um, wanting to make, to lock eyes with him, to be in his presence, to be with him, to face him. And that is what I am longing for today, more of his presence, more of his witness to know him. Um, it was described as a helpless, to be a helpless hungerer after the marvelous by Frederick Buchner, which I love and I want to be that exactly, a helpless hungerer after the marvelous. And so in our announcements today, you heard Brandon speak about this and I want to re-invite um, all of you to make this September one of consecration, one of devotion, to make these next few weeks a time of seeking his face. And I recognize as we invite everyone that this is a season of busyness, that many are signing up for soccer or karate or all the things that you start in September along with school that the calendar maybe just got a little bit busier, it, or it is about to ramp up. It is weird for Rod and I to be in a season of life where school starts on Tuesday and it really doesn't affect us, other than we just get to wave at all the kids walking to school on our street. But I know that it is a busy season. But it is also the beginning of a new, not only a new season, but a new year in many ways. And so as we have celebrated summer and taken time hopefully to be refreshed a bit physically to rest to go away to embrace a change of place what we want to invite our church family to do is give god our first as this season changes to give him our best to seek him first matthew 6 33 says seek first god's kingdom and what god wants then all your other needs will be met as well. And here is the reality, I'm just gonna say this boldly, is that by seeking God first, you will not miss out on anything important. When we seek him first, 
he provides. The other things will be added or will be given to you. You won't miss out by prioritizing your relationship, your connection, your communion with God. And so I want to invite you to consider what that might look like. Here's the thing. We could settle for less. We could. We could just make the best of this season and kind of go into it, trying to figure out how we're going to make it work, prioritizing those things that can so easily suck our attention, strength, our calendar, our time. We could settle for less in the same way that we could settle for alleviating hunger with things that don't necessarily provide nourishment or sustenance long term. We could settle for just saying, you know what? I am a child of God, and you are. But I am longing for more. I am longing for friendship with God. For friendship with God. To sit at the table with him, to know him, to know his voice and his heart. I am longing for his face. I am seeking his presence. And so our invitation is to seek him first with us. We are going to start this 21 days on Wednesday. A little bit different. We've, we've done this historically in September. We've done it in January where we set aside three weeks or 21 days to pray and feast sometimes or to pray and fast sometimes. And we feel in this season that it's important that we consecrate ourselves, that God is doing something extraordinary today, that he is moving and so we want to step up with like an extraordinary faith. And so I'm asking, would you consider consecrating, setting aside these three weeks to say, God, I am seeking you first. I want you more than anything. And in the process to consecrate ourselves, to present ourselves and say, God, I am giving you my whole heart, all of me. You get all of it. I'm going to seek you you first. And the way that we're going to do that is by, like I said, setting a table. When you can come, would you come and join us? So on Wednesday night, we will begin at 7 o'clock with a night of prayer and worship. Everybody's invited all ages. I don't know what God has for us, but I cannot wait to see. We will gather at 7 and we will pray together. We are going to gather and pray in person on Wednesday nights through these 21 days. Then we will also gather on uh, Monday mornings we're on Zoom, we do this consistently, but come join us at seven in the morning. We're gonna gather in person on Tuesday mornings right here in the building at 6.30. Maybe that works for you, for all of the early birds in the room, along with me, come and pray with us. And on Sundays, we also pray before anybody gathers for a worship service, we meet at nine o'clock and we pray together. Maybe you could join us there. In addition, we are praying every day for something specific as a church family. So maybe in your own time, as you wake up in the morning, you will pray with us. Or perhaps it will look like gathering with your family for 21 days and praying together with us for specific things. Those are all on the website. We know that there is power in agreement. And at the same time, would you consider, and like you heard, we're, we're inviting each one of us to make this a spirit-led decision. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but I wanna invite you to ask God to lead you and show you what he would have you do personally or have your family do to participate together. And deny a lesser love or a, an appetite that may be distracting or draining your attention, your energy, your focus in order to make that longing for God your first priority. So that might look like turning off the TV and eating around the table for 21 days. Imagine that. <laughs> it may look like committing to a Daniel fast for 21 days. It may look like fasting one day a week, perhaps. It may mean that you decide that you're gonna go dry for 21 days and give up alcohol. I know that there's a lot of celebration that happens through the summer, you know, and maybe you've really been enjoying those cocktails and it's time to say, I'm going to dial that down and God, all the longing that I have for a little bit of uh, refreshment or, or ease or peace that I find in alcohol, I'm going to turn that off and God, you, you get that. It may be abstaining from social media. 
It may mean just getting up earlier every day and prioritizing time with God over the longing to sleep in a little later. I don't know what it is, but would you ask God to show you how he is leading you? And it looks like praying along with us, and we will begin this Wednesday. And then as you heard, we are going into a brand new series on the table, and I cannot wait to talk about the theology of the table and how God has invited us to come and enjoy him, to feast on him, to be delighted by, restored by, nourished by, sustained by God himself together. I know that we have lots that we're taking on in this season for each one of us. And my conviction personally and for all of us is that we have a, a slim chance of bringing love to the world around us if we have not first fed on love himself. That is pretty exhausting, draining and trying to show up in this world with a true joy if you have not experienced joy himself. I'm not sure how we bring hope to this world unless we have fed on hope, on the hope that comes from Jesus alone. So would you come, come to the table Come and enjoy his presence. Come and prioritize him along with us, along with me. What Jesus made possible is the most incredible invitation. And in that story that he shared in, in, in Luke's gospel, when the rejections came in, the RSVPs came in and people said, sorry, I have other commitments, can't make it. He just extended the invitation wider. He didn't say, oh, okay, I'm gonna cancel, we're not doing it. Instead, he said, send it out. Send it to everyone. Send it to all the people on the street. Send it to the people who don't get invitations. I want them at my table. So I want to be clear, this isn't just for a few of us. This invitation is for all. It's for you, and it's for your neighbors, and it's for your friends, and it's for those that you will run into this month. Come to the table. And we are actually going to take a few minutes as we respond today, before we wrap up, by coming to the communion table, I want to invite you to come and respond by coming to receive the bread and the juice, which represents the body of Christ and his blood poured out for us. Jesus left his followers with a, a, a meal to remember him. And what he was really encouraging us to do is to come and remember to remember Remember what he has done. Remember the love that he has for you. Remember the invitation that is extended to each one of us. Remember that Jesus is central, that the table is right in the middle of the room here, and that he, Christ, is central to our lives, not just in addition to what we are planning for this season, but he is right in the middle. The cornerstone. He's central. And so let me, um, I'm just going to pray in a moment and I'm going to invite you to come and receive. I'll invite the worship team to come and join me as well. Isaiah chapter 55 has this beautiful invitation and this is for all of you. Oh, would you receive it today? Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Amen. Would you stand with me? Let me pray for you before I invite you to sing one more time and come to the table. In just a moment after I pray, after we pray together, I will invite you and we have a table that is right here in the middle. And if you are in the, the middle of the room today, you can use these aisles and come forward today. We've also set two 
tables on the side this morning, so if it's easier for you to go out that way, come around to this table if you would. And if you are over on this side of the room, if you'd come over to this table. We've made a little bit more space because we have our children with us today. So you may want to come and receive communion as a, as a family this morning, or come with a friend, or come on your own. But we wanted to make a little bit more space so we can linger at the table and remember together to remember. Remember what he has done. Remember the invitation that he's given us and the love that is demonstrated toward us. So let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. God, we just pause for a moment to honor your witness, your presence. Emmanuel, God with us right here. God, we're mindful that a new season is beginning and there will be many of us walking into new spaces, new classrooms, new offices, new opportunities. We don't know what the future holds, but you do. You're already there. Thank you that you're with us today. God, we desire your face. We desire your presence. God, we intend to seek you first. So this morning, as we receive communion, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We remember, Jesus, that you came, that you were a man, a human like us. You experienced the wildness of this life, the, the pain, the joy, the stress, you experienced it all, God. You, you know what it is to suffer. You understand us so deeply. We remember that you came and we remember, Jesus, that you came and you loved us so much and so well that you went to the cross. You died for us. You showed us what true commitment is. We thank you. We remember, we remember how you went to the cross and you rose again so that you could make space for each one of us. You paid the price we could not so that we could come to the table, so that we could know you, so that we can know you face to face today and so that we can anticipate knowing you for eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We thank you. We love you, God. This morning, God, we commit to turn from those lesser appetites, the longings or the cravings that we have for other things, God, to put you first, to seek you first. God, I pray that this would be a season that you would stir within us a longing for more of you, where we would experience you like never before. God, where your spirit would be moving and healing like never before. We thank you that you have called us sons and daughters. We belong to you. And God, I pray that you would also include us, as you already have, but God, we long to be friends of God, to know friendship with you. So we put you first. And we begin by celebrating this morning and enjoying communion together. I bless each person here, each family, each home represented here. God, I bless each one who is joining us online, who is tuned in to listen. God, I pray that you would meet them right where they're at. You know every story, you know every situation. Would you be with them? I bless them as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to this week's message. If something stood out to you, if you'd like to submit a prayer request, or if you'd like to learn more about how you can get connected, email relate at relatechurch.ca. If you'd like to partner with us and our community initiatives, please visit relatechurch.ca slash give. It's been an honor to spend this time with you. Catch you next week.